Hey again guys! So today I will be doing the final part of my bookshelf slash book collection tour. If you haven't watched part one and two of this mini series, I will link that down below and you can check those out. But let's get started with part three, the final part of the tour. So this first stack here is mostly books I've won from Goodreads. I know, kind of insane. So I don't know a lot about these books, but I'll do my best. This book is The Rendition. Can't tell you anything about it because I haven't read it. Now we have a Little Star, which I kind of think when I won it sounded kind of like, like a Stephen King book, like kind of creepy, kind of like horror, just kind of different. So I might start that one eventually. Unsinkable Mr. Brown, I haven't read, although the book came with like 15 like awards on the front cover, so I don't know, maybe it's popular and I just don't know. Next we have A Dual Inheritance and A Dangerous Inheritance, not related, which I thought was really interesting. But as you can see, the cover is kind of just like a little like crazy and weird looking, and that's because they're uncorrected proofs, so... I'm one of the first to read them, although I got those months ago and I haven't read it since, so maybe I'm not one of the first to read them anymore. And next we have 9-11 to Global Jihad, which I haven't read, but I remember when I like opened it, it sounded really cool. I think I featured this one in my Goodreads book haul, which was one of like my first ever videos and probably one of my most popular videos, even though I hate it, so I'll link that down below in the description box in case you want to see old me make really bad videos. Here we have A Warlock's Curse, which I want to say is like the third book in the series or something, so I haven't read that one. Here we have The Adventures of Tilda Pinkerton, which was very similar, I think, to Alice in Wonderland, or at least that's the impression I got. Next we have Evil Tendencies, which I haven't read. 100 Years of Marriage, which I haven't read, but it was also autographed, which I thought was cool. Lots of autographs from those Goodreads giveaways. Next we have Netflixed, which is like how Netflix has like taken over everything, which I don't know why I even entered that giveaway, but it might be cool. Next we have Edgewood, which I think is the first in the series, so I don't know, maybe I'll get into the series. This little thin tiny one, can you see that? It is called Reflections, and I remember when it first got here, it like arrived from India. I had a customs form from India attached to it, and I think it's just like short stories and like plays, poetry, but kind of cute. Here we have Chanel Bonfire, which I feel like is like just, I feel like people have read this before, like it's actually like a fairly popular book because I feel like I've seen it before. Here we have Sacrifice by Kayla Clover, maybe that's how you say that kind of cool. We have Lunch with Buddha, which I think is the sequel to a book, so can't really read that one. We have The Light of Amsterdam, which is the prettiest cover. I'm going to try and at least show you a little, oh, a little sneak peek. It's kind of got cute little houses at the bottom. I don't know. I thought it was really pretty when I won it. Let me fix that so nothing falls on me and kills me. We have The Autonomous Wife, haven't read that one either, Threads of Faith, Flashbind, um, I feel like that one was really cool when I picked it up, I just haven't read it. Inhale, uh, Stop in the Park, which is like a cute little romancy story, which I'm surprised I haven't read yet, because that's, you know, right up my alley. We have Angels at the Table, which I think is a Christmas story, although I might be wrong. And once again, it's got the weird kind of cover because it's an uncorrected proof. We have Deadlight District next, which was kind of like, I think like a mystery or like a detective story. And then these next two books, I didn't win from Goodreads. I just couldn't fit them anywhere else except on this pile. So they're here. The first one is Hatchet by, I believe it's Gary Poulsen. My favorite book as a child, right here, right? This one right here. Loved this book. It was incredible. And then we have a book that I was supposed to read for high school and I didn't. And that book is Of Human Bondage. I, yeah, don't think I read this one, so oops. So that concludes the first stack. And now before I move on to this stack, 
I just wanted to show you that I have a couple like little books in between the stacks because sometimes I think I'm an artist and I'm not. But I'll show you. We have The Trial and Death of Socrates by Plato, which I read for high school. Oh, no, I read for college. College girl read this one. Then we have The Five People You Meet in Heaven by Milch Album. If you haven't read any of his books, just go do that because you can get them done in like an hour. And they're also just like sometimes really uplifting and meaningful. Here we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I have the uh, movie cover because I saw the movie first. And then over here we have another three little thin books put in between the piles. We have the French version of The Little Prince, so Le Petit Prince. Here we have um, Bites, a collection of like vampire stories, which my mom bought me when I went through my twilight phase, so thanks mom. And then we have The Lord of the Flies, which is a book I hated in high school and still hate. So now we'll move on to this lovely pile of books here. At the bottom we have, because I'm a total nerd, the unofficial Hunger Games cookbook. I have actually made a couple recipes from here, which are not that bad, so check that out. We have Weep No More, My Lady by Mary Higgins Clark. Never read this. I didn't even know I owned this. I found this not too long ago, just kind of like lying under my bed, so I added it to my collection. Next we have Toni Morrison's A Mercy. My dad gave me this one, I believe, for Christmas one year. We have Wicked with a terrible break in the spine. Oh my god, do you see that? That is... Ugh. Here we have... Can you see that? Mirror for Humanity, which is probably the thinnest textbook I've ever bought and also the most expensive. Yay, college life! Here we have War and Genocide, which is kind of like a history on like the Holocaust and the war. And it's actually pretty like interesting to like read all that in such a thin book. And I read that for a Holocaust class sophomore year, and I actually liked this. Here we have Dear John by Nicholas Sparks, another book my mom gave me because my mom loves books like that, and I kind of do too sometimes, I'm not going to lie. Here we have Johnny Tremaine. Now we have Birds of New England, the Smithsonian handbook, because like I said, I used to bird watch because I'm a total nerd. Here we have Water for Elephants, which I need to reread because I don't remember at all. And when I watched the movie, I was like, ah, when did that happen? So I should give this one a reread, but I remember really liking it. We have A Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, another book I read for school. We have Night by Ellie Weasel. Weasel? I can never pronounce his last name, but possibly one of my favorite accounts of the Holocaust. Just totally mind-blowing story. If you like Holocaust literature and like memoirs and everything, please go check out Night. Now we have a couple Agatha Christie books. We have Murder on the Orient Express and The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I've read Murder on the Orient Express and I just found this one. Then we have The Other Bowling Girl, which is a book that I bought when the movie was coming out and then it came in the mail and it was like 600 pages and I was like, yeah, I'm not reading that. So I never read that. Then we have 19 Minutes by Jodi Pico. Now we have Pandora Seed by Spencer Wells, another book I read for class that I don't remember at all. Little Woman by Louise May Alcott. Um, we have The Air Affair, which I read so long ago, but I remember really liking it. So this one's definitely worth a reread, I think. I have The Girl with a Pearl Earring, which I got at like a cute little flea market. And then here we have Gandhi, The Essential Writings, another book I was supposed to read for college, and I don't remember it that well. This book is upside down, so sorry, but it's uh, Visit Paris with Remy um, from, like, the uh, Ratatouille. Yeah. Um, I bought this when I was in Paris because it was, like, 50 cents, and it was just cute, and I love Disney. So, yeah. Here we have Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, which I read so long ago and then realized that like Neil Gaiman is like an actual like really popular author. So I think I need to reread this one. And then we have The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. Look at how broken that spine is. That is atrocious. But I had to read that in high school and I remember really enjoying it. So yeah, 
that pretty much concludes this shelf. And then right here we have just three books that are just really big and hardback books that just can't really fit anywhere else so I stick them under my fan because that's how much I love my books. I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. Here we have The Devil in the White City, which I haven't read and was a gift for my dad, so I need to need to read that one because I think it's going to be a movie eventually, too. Here I have A Thousand Splendid Sons by the same author of The Kite Runner. Awesome, awesome, awesome book. And then we have another book by the same author, his most recent book, And the Mountains Echoed, which I haven't read yet, but I've been meaning to and just keep forgetting. So yeah, those are those are pretty much the last of my books. That that pretty much concludes this bookshelf tour. In the comments below, let me know what you thought on these books, or these books, or these books. So yeah, thanks guys, and I will see you soon. Bye!